Good morning, students. I know you guys are just so excited to have to go through this, but um, this is our demonstration for how to do a straight calf, which is part of the simulation. What Beth and I have decided to do is, first of all, do it in sections to give you an idea of what, do, what supplies do I need um, so that you're perfectly prepared when you go to do the straight calf. You'll notice that I have non-sterile gloves on. That is part of the procedure before, um, and make sure you do read the procedure before you attempt to do this. Um, you also will gather a set of sterile gloves that you will need, even though your kit may or may not have a set of sterile gloves. Um, the other thing to remember is that it depends on the place that you work. Some places may have a kit. Sanford, for example, has a pediatric cap kit, and it actually tells you what size um, is needed. This one says it's an eight French, and there is a um, sliding scale that you can use depending on the size of your baby. The kilogram weight of your baby will tell you what size to use. If an eight French is too small and they don't have anything else, um, feeding tubes can also be utilized, or NGs. Um, this kit is pre-assembled, so you would go ahead and open it up, and what's inside the kit, that you will notice, are, everything's kind of on a plastic bag, are your sterile gloves, there's a label, let's see, um, a label for the um, urine specimen, and then here is your straight calf kit, and if I pull this off, that is actually the straight calf. What the directions do say inside um, here is that sometimes you have to loosen the cap because it's on tight. That's a good idea because there's too much suction sometimes. And then you'll also notice that there is a sterile drape. Another component, um, oops, and then when you lift this up, we also have the KY or the lubricant, water-soluble lubricant, and then covidine iodine swab sticks. Um, key to remember is we will not use KY lubricant on our mannequin because the mannequins um, don't tolerate it well. But in a Welcome back for stage two. The next section that you will see us um, filming is pretty much just myself and the baby. Now number one, your red flag should go off because I would never do a straight calf by myself. We also would probably not have the parents help with this procedure. What I want you guys to remember is, you know, there's going to be three or four of you doing the simulation, so make sure you use all the bodies that are available. Um, all of you have been in clinical. Um, most of you have seen how we do nasal suctioning and how squiggly these little babies are, or how wiggly they are. So um, what your directions will say when you read the um, procedure is that you abduct the hips. And think about how this baby is. I could try and lean across, but what's going to happen to my airway for this baby? And is this baby going to be screaming and crying? Probably. Um, so you're just going to have to learn to work through the crying, soothing the person up at the head. So I would probably have somebody here up at the head to hold the shoulders and then have somebody across um, the lower half to abduct the hips and to open things up. And those individuals, um, the ones especially, the one especially at the legs and the hips should have gloves on. And um, I'm, you can probably take a look normally. Little infants, you may have to separate um, the labia to see um, the meatus and everything. Um, obviously, mannequin, you can see everything. All right, now what we're going to do is actually show you the sterile supplies. Um, as I had mentioned earlier, the catheter kit actually comes with a procedure where it talks about you can don the non-sterile gloves and um, then cleanse the labia. But what I find is, is that if you're actually using the povidine iodine that is inside the sterile kit, you're touching everything. So um, we feel that the best method is if you want to, one of the procedures talks about where you just wash the labia with warm soapy water and dry and then come back in and um, with your sterile field. So that's what my recommendations are. Now for the purposes of the simulation, you don't need to do that. The other thing that I should have mentioned is um, you can also put on, um, you know, like a lab, um, not a lab coat, but like a sterile, a, a gown or a cover for protection and also protective eyewear. Um, which would be highly recommended for your PPI. So now you've noticed I have my sterile gloves. I'm opening that up and I've also washed my hands again. We have explained the procedure thoroughly to the parents. Um, I'm going to open this up to get my package open and then everything in here is still sterile. Um, open up my sterile gloves and 
the one key component that you have to remember is is that if you are left-handed, you might actually want to be on the opposite side of the baby. I'm right-handed, therefore that's why I'm doing it from this angle. Really sticky gloves. So now, truthfully, you know, with seeing how the position of the baby, that's kind of like that frog leg position, I can lay this over. There's a diaper underneath the baby to try and give me a sterile area as much as possible. I'm going to open up my kit now, and I also have another one. We could try and lay this also underneath the baby, which um, would then give you another option. And this is going to be a little bit difficult because I might have to actually reach under. So. What I would probably do is have somebody lift the baby up and then we would tuck this underneath to um, give her, give us more room. As we mentioned earlier, my povidine iodine swab sticks, KY, we will not use on baby. So I'm going to go ahead and open and I will actually get my um, catheter ready to go. The lid is tight, unloosen it a little bit. And then here's your protective cover. I would probably keep that on until we're ready to assemble. But now I've brought everything close. Open up your povidine iodine. Get everything within close, handy range. And then they talk about this will be okay because I'm still sterile. I'm going to open the labia. And they really just talk about cleansing the meatus on the adult world. As you guys remember, we talked about how you had to go down one side and then the other. Well, in the infant, everything is very tiny. Remember, baby's gonna be screaming and crying here. My left hand is um, on that area, so I do not wanna change it. Sometimes you might have to adjust your the little blue tab here. I'm gonna go straight in until I get urine. After Beth and I reviewed the last one, you could see the general how, or in general, how things look. And what you will see now is just me doing the swabbing of the um, baby's labia and the meatus, and then also putting the catheter in, so you can actually see, okay, what what does it actually look like? So again, as I said earlier, we swab down, um, and you can go down both sides, but remember, the baby, everything is in the same. Um, general location, so it's not as if um, you have to make sure you're down one side and then the other. Again, make sure that the lid is a little loose and you can see the urethral opening and then you just go in. And granted, I would have also had the um, lubricant on the baby or on the um, catheter before I put it in. And now you'll notice that there's urine coming back in the tubing. And we don't need a full catheter or a full tube. I'm going to withdraw. And baby will probably continue to um, void or urinate, so that's why you have your diaper underneath. You'll withdraw the um, catheter, close this off. Tighten your lid and notice that you have now your urine specimen. So as you guys are thinking, what's missing? What do I need to do? And you're right, we have to put a label on that will include the child's name, their date of birth, my initials, and the time that it was drawn. And we'll put the label right on the specimen and include the lab voucher for the actual order and place it in the biohazard bag and either tube it or have somebody take it down to lab. And remember, I would have had a label on here. Good luck.